In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the techniques that you can use in SQL Server to do data imports and exports into an SQL table. So the three techniques that we're going to take a look at are the BCP utility or bulk copy program. The second method is to use the bulk insert transaction, transaction SQL statement. And the third method is to use SIS or integration services. So I'm going to begin by using the bulk copy program to copy data from a test.txt file to an SQL table. I've already created a very simple table called student and if I execute a select statement on this table you will notice that there is currently no data in this table. The table contains just three columns, the ID of the student, the first name, F name, and the last name, L name of the student. So I've already created a test.txt text file and this text file contains some information about some students and I would like to import this data into my students table using the BCP utility. So to do that we execute the following statement. This statement needs to be run, to be run from DOS because the BCP program runs outside of SQL so it is an external process so it may take a longer while to run than transaction SQL statements such as the bulk insert statement. However, with the BCB you can do both imports and exports whereas the bulk insert statement you can only do data imports. So I'm going to copy this command and paste it into a DOS prompt. And what this command will do, it imports data, import specified by using the in option here from the test.txt file into the student table using a trusted connection capital T and character data type lowercase t and the, using the pipe symbol as the column delimiter and the new line character as the row delimiter as you see in my table here each of the columns are separated by a pipe symbol and each of the rows are separated by a new line so I'm going to execute a statement in DOS so I'm going to copy this and this would actually be uh, backslash here for the new line character. So we see that three rows have been copied. So let's take a look at our table. And we see the three students being added to our table. Similarly, we can export this data into another text file by using the out option. So if I just modify the previous command, and instead of in, type out to signify that we are doing a data export into a file called test2.txt and press enter. We've created another text file and you can see the information has been exported into the format that we preferred which is to have a pipe character or pipe symbol as the column delimiter and a new line as the row delimiter. We could also even modify the command to issue a select statement to list all the student's first name only into a text file. So by running the query out option in the command, we are able to execute a select statement on the SQL table and send the output to the test tree.txt file. So I'm going to copy this command and paste it. And then we see only the first names of the students are listed in the output file. So now let's take a look at the second method of importing and exporting data called the bulk insert method. The bulk insert method as stated earlier is the transact SQL statement that you can execute from your query window inside Management Studio. So in this particular statement as you see here we are going to import data from the test.txt file into the student table using the bulk insert transaction SQL statement. We are using the field delimiter as the pipe symbol and the row delimiter as a new line character. So I'm going to modify the content of this text.txt file and then do the import using the bulk insert statement. 
So I've modified the test.txt file to, in to include the following new students. Next I'm going to use the utility, the bulk ins insert statement rather, to do this import. So I'm going to select the bulk insert statement and execute. And then I'm going to run a select statement on my students table to see if those rows have been added. And yes they have. So the true students that were added to the text file have been included into the or imported into the SQL table by using the bulk insert statement. Now we're going to take a look at SSIS, which is the most robust method for importing and exporting data from SQL. So to begin we're going to right click on on the test database, then go to task, and then we're going to export all the data from the current students table into a test.txt file. So I'm going to go next after selecting the data source, which is the current database. And then we're going to specify a destination. The destination is going to be of type flat file destination. Then I'm going to browse for the text file, or I can actually create a new text file. So I'm going to type test new.txt, which will be the name of the file which will contain all our exported data. Then we're going to go next. And then we're going to specify that we want to copy all data from the current table rather than specifying a query. So I'm going to go next and then we're going to select the source table which will be the student's database. The row delim delimiter is the new line and the column delimiter should be changed to what we want to have which is the vertical bar or pipe symbol. Then we're going to go next and then we're going to execute immediately. So our data has been exported. If we take a look at the file we see that all the data has been correctly exported. Now I'm going to do uh, import from all this information back into the students table. So I'm going to firstly delete all information from the students table. Then if I execute a select statement on the students table, we see that no rows have been returned, indicating that the table is currently empty and contains no data. So I'm going to right click back on the test database, go to task and this time select import data. The source this time is going to be a flat file. I'm going to select browse for the test new.txt file which we exported earlier. And then we're going to look at the some other options that we can select in this wizard. So for the column section, we're going to ensure that the column delimiter is the pipe symbol and the row delimiter is the new line. We have also seeing a, a preview of the data in the table in the text file. So then we can go to next select in the current database test and then we can change the destination to be the student's table. If we go to edit mapping we can see the mapping of columns. Column 0 mapping to the ID, column 1 mapping to the first name, column 2 mapping to the last name. And press OK then go next and execute immediately. So now if I run a select statement on a student's table we see that all the data has been re-imported into SQL and this has been done using the SSIS or integration services.